Bit of a wet day out there today, so I thought I might as well touch base on this little uh, Mazda project. I don't think I've spoken about it on YouTube, so this will give you a bit of a longer, in-depth overview of the whole car. So I've got this car here with my brother, it's a Mazda 616. Basically what that is, is a piston version of the Mazda RX-2. It's already been converted to rotary, certified, but all that's going to be irrelevant shortly as we've got to go through the whole process again. Had a Warren Rego and all that stuff. It was a tidy car from about 10 metres away. But apart from that up close it was pretty um pretty ugly really. Real bad paint job on it. As for the rust side of things, so it had little rust bubbles on each corner of the doors and these back guards here. So got rust all up through there, same as the other side, and those little rust bubbles there where they all seem to rust. But apart from that, the body's really dry, the floor pans, everything else is really nice. There's no ugly underseal. So we've got no hidden gremlins on the underside of the car, which is a really yeah. So great base to start with. Someone's already done a lot of hard work on the engine bay, so pretty happy with that. What need to do a lot in here, so they've really smoothened it out. And yeah, done a few bits and pieces, hidden things. I quite like cars, so how I like my cars, like design-wise, I like to, I like things looking factory, but clean at the same time. So I'm not really into making big tubs and flat firewalls and stuff. I still like them to look like the origin of a car but modified if you know what I mean so just keep them clean and weld all the holes up so what we're going to do with the engine bay I've already ripped a lot of stuff out going to be making a oil cooling radiator from scratch going to have all hidden lines going to have a hidden water pump as you can see it's going to be electric water pump but you're just going to see the two lines and you won't actually see any water pump or anything in there crank angle sensor I've converted it to that I've already had it up and running and it seemed to run really really well I was quite surprised actually on an old school Microtech going to be leaving this carbureted reason being is because there's going to be no injectors no TPS so there'll be no ugly plugs no ugly fuel rail, rails to keep it real simple and clean and all this carb here requires is one fuel line on the back side that's why I really like this manifold because it flips the carburetor 180 and you won't have any ugly fuel line coming across here the quite a rare manifold as for the fuel regulator all that's going to be gone the brake booster master cylinder all that's going so we're going to be putting in a reverse swing pedal box in there fuel regulator's gone uh, hidden oil filter so the way we're going to plumb that and hide all the lines the oil filter is going to be mounted up under here and we've good access too because nothing worse than you want to do oil change nor the one when you like on a rotary the oil filter sits that way so you pull it off and just makes a mess so at least this way here be real easy access for when we want to drain the oil and yeah so it should be good in that sense it's currently just a 13B extend port, a little Series 1 gearbox, and it's got a little Mazda LSD diff in it. So we're going to be selling the gearbox and the diff out of it. Obviously the exhaust will make a whole new exhaust for it. Quite a shame really because it's actually a really, really nice sounding exhaust. So it's a twin with two resonators in the middle, out to the back to a super trap. But it's a really nice deep sounding car, it's not really a real buzzy tinny car. So what else has this car got? It's um, got the XYZ adjustables front and back. Might be keeping the front, but as for the rear, we'll touch base soon what we're doing out there. So overall, as I say, body-wise, it's a really dry car. Real happy with it. I've tried buying as much new stuff as I can for it. So like all new bumpers, trims, lights, everything I could buy new, I brought for it. Basically, the only things we'll be reusing are the wipers and all the trims you can see around the windows and stuff. Now let's move on to the back. So what we're doing out on the back, basically gonna be just gutting this whole thing out from that point there backwards. It'll just be a bare shell of a car. And we're going to be doing like a an effect you come this way so it'll be two new chassis rails coming up here like a big c notch really and then doing false floors wheel tubs because no doubt how low i want this thing we'll be having to cut out inside there and cutting out inside the actual door skin oh, sorry the door frame as well so that'll need, need to be cut out so yeah that's the plan for this little thing keeping it in i'm not too sure if i'm going to go bridge port or peripheral port on it We'll just soon see once I pull the motor apart and see what's inside the motor and the condition of it. But it's not going to cost me any, any extra to do a PP or a bridge port. It's all the same, same really. And you say you, when you build a motor, you only build it to one standard. It doesn't matter if it's an extend port, a six port or a peripheral port. Just all do it the same. Make them more reliable. And what else we're going to be doing? I can't really find any cheap disc brake setups. So I'm probably just going to make my own setup out. So the disc brakes on the front and rear obviously, it's going to be a Hilux diff in the back. And the plan for this car is just to make it ultra ultra low. 
Not too sure about the wheels, I'm not too sure if I want to keep them or not. They're brand new, got them off Sam Longley, so I was pretty lucky to get them really. But the more I look at these wheels, as much as I like them, because it, you know with the mice they give that illusion of a really big dish because you see the spoke design. See how it comes out and cuts back in. So if you think about a normal, uh, like a normal wheel, you only have a little lip down to basically here. So that'll come flush to that little point there. So therefore, you only have a little lip. So that's the great thing about the mice that they give that great illusion. So overall, really dry car, great starting base for a project, and we should be good to go. Oh, that's another thing. We've obviously got to do the. So we've got to remount the gearbox. We're well, going to get a new gearbox in shortly. So we'll be remounting that and the engine as high as we can go. And then we can sort all of our drive, um, drive shaft angles and stuff out. We're going to be making a whole new gearbox tunnel in the back. And also, I should have had it up on the hoist so you can see that banana cross member there. So that's probably the lowest point of the car there. So I want that thing raised right up and get rid of this ugly engine mount because as you can see, it's not the prettiest looking thing, especially those welds. So I just want to clean this whole front up and if we raise this up, raise the whole motor up, which should give us ample clearance because I want this thing to be, I don't know, 70 to 50 mil off the ground on the underside. So we should better get away off that. Yeah, there we have it. Pretty basic project, NA, old school. Just want it yeah, super slammed. And what we're going to be doing with it afterwards is we're going to be selling it. So I'm building this to sell. It's never been a dream car of mine to own a car like this. It's just another car I've got in the deal with a set off my brother. So, yeah. So it'll be a good practice because the next one after this will be our RX3 Coupe. And that will be a full, um, <laughs> yeah, a full proper build, eh? As in the Coupe, I want to do brand new floor from the firewall back if we can get it legal. So, yeah. This will be a good little uh, toy practice car. The estimated time I think I'll have this done by, hopefully this time next year, so yeah, say a year's time, it should be back up on the road, ready to go, it won't take too long at all, the fab work will be pretty quick, the longest part, like anything really, is um, doing all the panel and paint, so my goal will be, once everything's all finished, I'll try and do, complete one panel per week, so you know, you know, one week, do a guard, next, next week do a door, so forth, so yeah, that's it. Oh, and that's another thing, before I forget. Inside the dash, what I'm gonna be doing is, gonna be running some custom made gauges. So they'll be designed exactly how I want them, like the colors and everything. So they'll still like, as I said before, I like everything to look factory, so I still like all the factory body lines. So I want it to be in the factory housings, but I want it real modern and new school with like digital um, gauges in there and stuff with my own clacking plates, face plates and that type of carry on, so yeah. Real simple little car. There we have it. Might do some updates now and then on it, but I've still got heaps of um, footage from the Alteza I haven't even uploaded. All the bits and pieces were built on that. There we have it. Old school. As for the interior, we're going to be doing a full suede retrim from the headlining to the floor. Haven't decided on the seats. Um, I look at some factory, I've seen some factory golfs, they have some pretty cool seats, they look like bucket seats but they don't, but the side, sides have got nice bolsters and so does where the seat base is, but they don't have the holes for the race belts, so something like that or even Suzuki Swift have some nice looking seats as well, yet again similar style, real nice bolsters like a bucket seat without the holes in the headrest, so yeah that's basically it really, I bought as much new things as I could, like all the strikers, everything you could, down to even like the light switch basically in there I could pull off this car and I could buy new I brought it new so it'd be rubbers like everything like I'm talking anything I could find on eBay Phil's rotaries pack whatever I could buy new I brought it so this car here a lot of people are asking me how much you gonna sell it for so this car as you see in this best state owes me 70 grand so that's no gearbox no diff no fuel setup no engine rebuild no cert no brakes um, no tune, no nothing. So that goes to show the sort of the value of what I'm going to be selling it for. And if I don't get what I want for it, it can literally just sit until prices come back up and um, we can sort of get that money again. I can just use it in the meantime. So yeah, price wise, I don't know. It'll be pretty close to 100k by the time I'm done. So yeah, if I don't get that, then it can just sit here. But it's going to be a pretty cool car for someone. We're doing full rewiring from the front back. So recently, 
this car had been apparently rewired, but I, I doubt it because it was pretty rough. So the only old wire is going to be from that combination switch. Everything else forward from the headlights to tail lights to the running of the motor and everything else in between is all going to be new. So I say this is going to be one pretty cool, reliable car for someone. Basically, everything will be new. So even the gearbox for it has um, just been rebuilt. Um, as for the diff, I'll make sure I'll rebuild the diff and stuff. So there are no fail points or weak links on this car. Everything is basically, you've got an old shell with all new modern technology and running gear. And nice and strong. And being a little NA, I doubt you're going to break any of the drivetrain. Good to go.